God. How many have ever had doubts in God? Right? Anybody you've had doubt? Right? If if we're all honest, we all have. If if you um, if you didn't if you would say you didn't, I would say you were lying, right? Because we've all had different uh, times in our lives where we've doubted God. Before we get to that topic, though, again, today is Easter. And I want us to remember that um, there was a time over 2,000 years ago when Jesus was suffering on the cross. And he, was, and he looked to heaven just before he died. And he said, it is finished. And he looked into the heavens and and, and he rested his head. And at that moment, he took his last breath. The earth trembled, if you read the story. The rocks shook. The sky went dark. The disciples, they were there, who believed in him, who risked everything. They left everything they knew to follow Jesus. And they were terrified. They were crushed. If you can imagine following the Savior and then seeing him brutally beaten, bruised, crucified, and then dying. But that wasn't the end of the story. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 6, let's read this. It says, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to visit the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothes was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the, wom- to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said it would happen. So today, church, can we can we clap one more time because we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, the cornerstone of our faith. And, and this is like, this is the crowning proof, right? That this is why we are saved. This is why we come to church, because he rose again. Because he loves us. And because he did, we have salvation. We have forgiveness of sins. We have the opportunity to know Jesus. You know, scripture records about 13 post-resurrection uh, appearances of Jesus before he goes back to heaven. So, so if, if you think of the story, Jesus comes and he's born of the Virgin Mary. And, and at the age of 33, he dies on the cross. He comes back to life. And when he comes back to life, there were at least 13 times that people saw him living again after having been crucified. And before he was taken up into heaven, before they, they call it the ascension, before he ascends back to heaven, he did, he did like a, um, like a, like what's, what Iron Man, like back to heaven, right? And he gave his disciples this assignment, which is still true for us today. Call it the Great Commission. He said to go into all the world, preaching the good news, baptizing people, and spreading the word of God, spreading the good news that Jesus is alive and that we have this opportunity and then there's this verse that a lot of us miss, and, and including myself, because we're so, we're so enamored, right, by, by the, the, the idea that Jesus rose again and we believe it. But sometimes we got to slow down. And, and look at this verse, because we could learn something from this. In Matthew chapter uh, 28, verses 16 and 17, it says this, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountains, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But, what does that say? Some of them, what? Doubted. Some of them doubted. And that's what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to talk about doubt. This, This idea that we doubt sometimes. And dealing with it. And as I asked at the beginning, um, how many of you have ever doubted, right? Doubted God. 
that he would come through, that he would answer a prayer. Um, maybe you, without question, believe in God, but you still have your doubts. Anybody there? You still have your doubts? Sometimes you feel super close to God. Um, you feel his presence. You know he's real. And then in a moment's and then, and then you show up to church one day, you show up, uh, you, you open your Bible to read it, and all of a sudden you're like, I, I don't know though. Like, why isn't it, why, why do the people I know aren't, why, why are they not reading the Bible? Or why, why is there so much chaos going on in the world? And you, you show up to church maybe, and you've got so much going on, and you see everybody maybe worshiping God or that one person that loves to worship, Right? And you're thinking to yourself, why don't, why don't I feel God? Or, or why didn't he answer my prayer? Or why is so much bad going on? Is he real? And, and you start to doubt. And, and when you doubt God, it could become a scary feeling. For me, when, when I have my doubts, it gets a little scary. Because if God isn't real, then what do we really have? What, what hope do we really have after this life? What, what peace can we really have if there isn't a hope that we have a Savior that loves us or if there isn't a purpose for our lives? How can we really have peace if, if, if after this life there's kind of nothing? Like, what do we live for? And what, what, what hope do we have? Or, or the people that have died before us, like, what about them? Will we ever see them? Or, is it, or when we die, is that, is that just it? I mean, we just got to accept it? So we can get scary. And there's a few reasons why we doubt. Um, there's some questions, and I'm going to give you th the three reasons here. Sometimes we doubt because there's questions that you can't answer. You, you can't answer why things happen and, and why, get, why God didn't answer your prayer. And then there's situations that seem a little unfair. Like, you didn't do it. They did it to you. They hurt you. You had nothing to do with it. And it seems unfair, so you doubt God. Maybe, maybe you had the best intentions and somebody did you wrong. And you have hurt that you can't resolve. Pain that just doesn't go away. And some Christians that you know, or some believers maybe that you know, regardless of, of this list, um, they don't bend. They're like, I'm believing in God anyway. Nothing's going to break me, right? And then you look at yourself and you're like, well, they can't possibly be like that all the time, right? <laughs> because I know being a realist, right, and I think we should be, that we're going to have our ups and downs in our faith. You know, especially those of us who have kids and, and we raised them in church and those that were raising our kids in church or maybe uh, we have family members that, that know about God, but, you know, they're, they're distant from God whatever that might look like for you because they've doubted for whatever reason. I, I, I think today is going to help you become encouraged because doubt's actually a good thing. Doubt's actually a, a good thing because when, you, when doubt is handled properly, it can be a catalyst to stronger faith. But it's what we do with our doubt. It's what we do with our doubt. And I want to put this on the screen your faith is a journey. It's, it's not a destination, right? In other words, you, you, you will never arrive at fully being faith, just completely full of faith. Church Online, you'll never get there. You'll, ne you'll never get to the place where I've arrived, right? I've arrived and I believe and nothing's going to shake my faith and, and I'm, I'm, I'm fully 100% charged, right? I could take my you know, faith off the wireless charger and I'm good to go. Like you'll, you'll, never, you'll never get there. It's a journey. Because even though today, maybe we're full of faith, and that's why we're at church, and that's why you're online, even though today it could be one of those days, as it should be, where we, we're celebrating the resurrection of Christ, there's going to be days where you doubt. And you're going to think to yourself, is this all real? Maybe, maybe you had a conversation with somebody at work, or you watched a video on YouTube. I watch way too much YouTube, right? And, and, and you're like, wait a minute. They're kind of right. <laughs> like, is this, what am I doing, right? Um, the church, I want you to know, we'll put this up, the church should be the safest place 
to ask hard questions. And so I want you to know today, and, and you online, if you have your doubts, if you're new to God, if you're exploring, or maybe you don't even believe in God or you've left God, I want you to know it's okay. It's okay. This is a safe place to ask hard questions. It's okay. Your beliefs about God build over time. And it's a journey, not a destination. And sometimes there's detours, sometimes that cause you doubts, that cause doubt in your mind, in your, in your head, in your heart. But we'll say this, the strongest faith isn't a faith that never doubts. The strongest faith is a faith that grows through your doubts. The strongest faith isn't faith, isn't a faith that never doubts. The strongest faith is a faith that grows through your doubts. Uh, not too long ago, well, it's been a while now, they came out with these Bluetooth um, uh, head ear, ear pieces, right? How many remember when those first came out and they were like super huge? It almost looked like a, a big old, you know, piece like this on the side of your head and I remember uh, walking I, I came to the church for some reason and, and we're, I, I came to pick up something and I didn't want to turn on the light so I, well, I turned off the light walked through the hall I had one on it was like the first time I was you know wearing it and and I saw a flash out of the side and I was like whoa like what like is God is that you you know it, it was it, it was blinking in in the dark and I, I forgot that I had this thing on and I remember art. I thought we were going to have to surgically remove the one you, you wore all the time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, because um, art was like a big believer, right? A big, er, er, an early, ad, uh, early adapter, we'll say that, uh, into the Bluetooth. And, and so we, we Bluetooth this idea of wireless, right, connection. And later, um, uh, somebody said, well, you know, you could do Bluetooth through video. And I'm like, no. Like, Come on, I'm Mr. Tech. This isn't going to happen. Like, I, I, we have all kinds of technology at church. I know what I'm doing. Bluetooth video does not work. Like, how? You know, I was totally, you don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Sure enough, I go to Microsoft, and they give me this little device, and it worked. I was like, what? <laughs> like, you could do video through Bluetooth, and I became a, and, and then I just got even more faithful to technology, right? That's how it went. Um, but we have, we have these doubts, and sometimes doubting helps us believe even more, right? Um, in in uh, John chapter 20, verse 24, 25, Scripture says one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, uh, he was nicknamed the twin, was not with the others. Listen to this. He was not with the others, when, when Jesus came, they told him, we have seen the Lord. So he wasn't there. We have seen the Lord. And, and, and in Greek, and this, this, is, this is the fun part, that we have seen the Lord, when we translate this in the original language that was written, they say it multiple times. We've seen the Lord. And, and he might have been looking at him like, like, what are you talking about? We've seen the Lord. We've seen the Lord. We've seen the Lord. And in verse 25, says, they told him, we have seen the Lord, but Thomas replied, I won't believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers in them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. And, and so Thomas, if you grew up in church, kind of has a bad rap, right? Thomas is, is what they, who they call like doubting Thomas. Like he's the guy that, uh, you know, forget Thomas. He should have just believed from day one. But he just wants evidence, and he wasn't there the first time when, when the disciples saw him. He wasn't there. He's like, I, I, I want to see. I'll, I'll see it when I believe it. And he got this bad right. I mean, my goal today is, is to kind of dignify a little bit his doubts, and maybe yours too, to see how we can see through Scripture that his doubts were legitimate and how it brought him to uh, even greater faith and our doubts could bring us to greater faith as well. You know, Thomas, how many are realists in here? How many are realists, right? Like, I'm a realist. Like, I, I, if, if you tell me something is going to happen, you know, or it's supposed to happen, I'm thinking to myself, well, it should, but it could fail, you know. 
or, or we might get there, or my car could break. Like, like there's, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm a realist. Like, there's, something could happen, right? And, and this is, this was, this was Thomas. He was a realist. Um, I love what Oswald Chambers said. He said this. He said, "Doubt is not always a sign of that a man is wrong. It may be a sign that he's thinking." <laughs> You ever read that one before, right? Doubt isn't a sign that a man is wrong or he's bad or he should get a bad rap, but it might be, it may be that he's just thinking. He's using the brain that God gave us, the brain that would be impossible for it to just form over time, the brain that has a creator. And if you were to ask me, how to rank the disciples in terms of faith. And after studying a little bit more about Thomas, I'd be like, yeah, he actually has, he's kind of like me. He likes to see some evidence. He likes to understand how things work. He wants to see why and how, and he wants to put his hands on it, right, to see how it works. And if, in fact, that Jesus came back to life. And so in John 11, Scripture says, so then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, right? I think they called him T. Diddy back then, I think. Um, that was a dad joke. All right. Said to the rest of the disciples, let us go that we may die with him. Now listen to this. We don't, re, we, we lose these scriptures sometimes or we don't, we, we pass right over it because we think doubt, we think Thomas bad, other disciples good. Let's read that one more time. So then he, Jesus told them plainly, and, and remember the story when Lazarus died? He says, Lazarus is dead. Let us go to him. Then Thomas, is the same Thomas, okay, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Did you, did you, have you ever read that scripture? Did you, did you realize that's the same guy that, that we, we, have, we give a bad rap to? That he's like, well, I guess we got we to go die with him. Like that's the kind of faith he had. And it wasn't that he had a lack of faith. It wasn't that he was the only doubter of the bunch. He was, he was different like that, just as many of us are. We're not all programmed the same. We don't all see the same things the same way. And Thomas said, hey, we'll go die with him. And later he said, I don't believe, right, until I see, right? So this, this is a guy that's thinking. This is a guy that's analyzing some stuff. In John 14, when, when, when Jesus had said, hey, I, I'm going to heaven to prepare a place for you, and, and, and Thomas would be like the guy, well, well, we don't know where you're going, right? And, and how do we know why and where and how big is it going to be? <laughs> he wanted some of these details. He, he just wanted to know for himself what it's going to be like, right? How many are like that in your life? Like somebody says, hey, um, we're going to do this. And, and the, the next 10 questions you have, well, well when... Why? What, what do I need? When do I need to be there? Do I need any tools? Do I, like you start to think, right? Anybody else like that, right? Thomas wanted to see Jesus for himself. And again, we have this idea that it's a bad thing to doubt Jesus or, or Thomas is doubting Thomas. And let's look at how Jesus responded to him. In John chapter 20, Scripture says, eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, again, this is eight days after this event where he said, hey, I want to see him. Eight days later, they were together again. And at this time, Thomas was with them. Thomas showed back up. He said, I don't believe eight days earlier, right? Until I see. He showed back up eight days later. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And in verse 27, 
Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. And he looked at his hands. Put your hands into the wound of my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. And he, and he responded, my Lord and my God. Thomas explained. See, Jesus came to Thomas when he was doubting. And he gave him what he needed. He gave him a moment. He didn't get mad at him. He's like, forget Thomas, like the rest of you. Who, who are the ones that believe? He said, no, let me show you. Come here. Let me answer your prayer. Let, let, me, let me confirm by you touching my wounds and seeing my hands that I really am the, the, the Jesus that died for you. He didn't shout at him. He didn't get mad at him. He didn't tell him to go away. I only want people who believe here. He said, no, it's okay. It's okay. See, God isn't distant, is not distant in your doubts. God is not distant in your doubts. Jesus isn't a standoff savior. He's willing to be touched, right? When he feels far, reach out to him. Reach out to him because he reaches out for us. And you could question. There's a lot of questions. Why there's death and, 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 and suffering in the world, why there's earthquakes, why there's hurricanes, why there's so many uh, uh, different um, languages, seasons, feelings that people have, emotions. There's all these questions that we have. And it's okay to wrestle with those. It's okay to struggle with doubt. And I want to encourage you today that if you do have struggle, if you do have doubt, or if you have written God off, to do a little research. Because you'll find that God is real. You know, I, I really believe that the greatest doubters often become the strongest believers. The greatest doubters almost often become the strongest believers. The devil, our, our enemy, he's real, tries to use doubt to drive us away from God. I mean, have you ever felt that? And God can use that same doubt because God uses everything for his glory to draw you to God. I've mentioned this many times, but think about your journey. Think about the hardest things that you've been through in your life right now and think about the fact that you're here right now today. Things that you didn't think you would get through, things that you didn't know how you would get through, pains, struggles, losses, divorces, breakups, right, deaths, all, all of the above, and you just didn't know how, how you were gonna get through it, but yet you're here today. You know, Thomas, as much as he gets a bad rap, in Matthew 28, um, after Jesus is standing on the mountain before he sends, he says, go preach. Go spread the gospel. Go baptize them, right? The Great Commission. And tradition says that, that Thomas um, was martyred in India in about 72 AD. And they drove a stake right through his stomach for his faith. Like that's the kind of faith that he had that he died for his faith. In fact, all of the disciples, in fact, if there was ever evidence that Jesus was real and he really came back to life, there's 12 guys that gave their life for it. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't give my life for something that it was a lie. They were willing to continue their faith after Jesus came back to life. That was why, that, that's why it's so important today. That's why our faith is so important, because he, he lives again. Because he lives, we live. Because he lives, we have salvation. Because he lives, we have forgiveness of sins. Because he lives, we can believe in a Savior that is alive and well. 
And I'm telling you, you can't convince any 12 people in the world to give their lives for a lie. Somebody would, somebody would bail, or half of them would. But they didn't because they saw him. They saw him alive. And they said, it's worth it. It's worth continuing to preach the gospel, even if it means my life, because he rose again. And he's alive. See, faith uh, isn't the absence of doubt. Faith means, faith is the means to push through it. To push through it. It's okay to doubt, but don't give up. Keep searching. Keep searching. It's okay to doubt, but don't write it off. Keep searching. Keep asking God. Remember in Psalm 23, verse 4, when, when King David, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. In the middle of, of a time where death was upon him, in the middle of the time where, where um, he's in the valley, he says, Yet I'm, I will fear no evil. Because this hurts. This is scary. I don't know what's going to happen. I'll probably die. You're with me. We'll walk through valleys. But don't let your doubt be the dead end. It's okay. This, this whole series, this is just an introduction. There's a ton of things that we're going to get into that you really, really need to be here for. But just know that it's time to come to Jesus. It's time to understand that faith is a journey. It's not a destination. It's okay to, to explore and, and understand and find answers to doubts that you've had. What do you say, church? Jose, do we have that song at the very end that we loaded? Is there one there? Yeah, that's it there. We're going to use that. Um, I want to invite you to stand, church. And we're going to end um, singing this song. And then I'll come back and, and we'll dismiss. But I want you to focus on the words. I want you to um, really uh, 